Am I audible, sir? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, good afternoon, distinguished guests and fellow knowledge seekers. I am Supriya Nayaka. Welcome to yet another enlightened session of Creatives Weekend Online Talks. We are thrilled to have you with us today for the 116th episode of Creative Online Weekend Talks. Today's topic is on exploring the versatility of microwaves. Microwaves, those electromagnetic waves with wavelength ranging from 1 millimeter to 1 meter have revolutionized the way we communicate, cook and, and so many more. In this talk, we unreveal the secret of microwaves for their origin to their widespread uses in our daily lives. I could like to extend our gratitude to Dr. Basuraj Kagli, sir, who recommended our esteemed resource person for today's talk, Dr. H.M. Mahesh. We are honored to have him here to share his expertise with us. Creative. Creative is one uh, is more than just a group. We are like-minded individuals who are curious and eager to acquire new knowledge. Our very name encapsulated our essence, Cree for creativity and active for being proactive. Creative signifies that to be truly active, we must be creative. Our tagline, Knowledge Square, underlines our commitment to knowledge sharing, knowing that the more we share, the more we grow. The vision of Creative is to encourage constructive thinking across various domains with a special focus on non-textual, non-academic and non-syllabus concept. Every Saturday, we gathered online on the Zoom platform and our programs are live streamed on our YouTube channel, Creative GBD. We are privileged to have the support of eminent individuals, including ISRO scientists like Shri, uh, Mr. Srinath Ratnakumar, Dr. Girish, and many more. We are also have a MOU with GFGC Chintamani PG Center, supported by Dr. Jyoti Ma'am and Dr. Dinesh Sir, uh, with further strengthens our commitment to knowledge sharing. I want to express our gratitude to all the resource persons who continuously engaging us with their knowledge and insight. Their contributions are invaluable to our group. We encourage each and every one of you to actively participate in this session. And please uh, don't hesitate to ask questions at the end of the session. I welcome one and all for today's talk and uh, thanks for joining with us. I call uh, Panindra uh, to introduce today's speaker. Over to Pani. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Panindra, a creative volunteer. Dr. Mahesh, born in Tungabhadra Dam Township, near Hospet, on June 5, 1968, had his early education in Munirabad and Chitradurga. He earned his B.Sc. and M.Sc. degree in Physics with Electronic Specialization from Mysore University and later obtained his Ph.D. in Environmental Radioactivity from Mangalore University, supported by DAE and JRF Fellowships. He conducted postdoctoral research at Coving University, Belfast, the U.K. from 2002 to 2004. Returning to India, he joined Kuwempu University, where he established the Electronic Science Department and conducted research in thin film devices and digital signal processing. Dr. Mahesh became a pro professor at Bangalore University, where he served as the chairman of the department multiple times. His teaching and research interests span microwave devices, semiconductors, and nanoelectronic devices and advanced communication systems. Professor Mahesh completed numerous research projects guided students at various levels, published over 120 research papers, and delivered invited talks globally. He has visited various countries for academic purpose. And today, let's welcome to the topic, Explore the Versatility of Microwaves. Over to you, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you for a nice uh, yeah, introduction, and uh, Panindra, and uh, thank you also for Supriya, madam. 
So thank you for the creation for giving me the opportunity. Sir, one minute. I'll unmute. One minute. Ah, just unmute yourself, sir. Ah, okay. Go ahead, sir. Okay. So thanks for Creative for uh, giving me an opportunity uh, to share my interest in the microwave, uh, microwaves and microwave communications. So let us start. So the today's topic is on uh, exploring the versatility of uh, microwaves. Uh, here you can see on the right hand side of uh, the slide, uh, there's a uh, Tower micro tower, which you are all familiar with, uh, and you have been observing this uh, uh, around you in our day to day life. And uh, these are micro towers. And in order to uh, have this in the tower, you can see the antennas, various antennas. And in order to make this antenna to be work, uh, there needs some devices. And that those devices are here. One is the device is here. There's a magnetron which we are going to start uh learn about it or maybe discuss about it uh, uh, after a few slides from now and then uh, here also the uh, another type of uh, devices vacuum based devices the old uh, type of devices anyway this is uh, uh today's uh, the overview of our presentation in the presentation uh, let's start with the introduction properties uh, for microwaves advantages of microwaves sources of uh, microwaves and uh, of course, applications of microwaves, they are uh, unlimited and a large number of applications are there on the microwaves. But uh, I'd like to restrict uh, myself to the fields like uh, application of microwaves in the communications and application of microwaves in the defense sector, medical sector or industrial applications and then research uh, where we are using uh, microwaves and the concluding thing. So here on the picture, there is uh, one thing uh, you can see that is a uh, electromagnetic wave, uh, which has electric vector that is represented with the uh, red line. And uh, there is a vertical uh, here. And uh, there is a horizontal line that is a magnetic vector. So together, uh, electric and magnetic vector, we call it as electromagnetic wave. And the distance uh, between uh, the two peaks uh, we represent with uh, lambda, there is a wavelength. And the number of uh, such uh, cycles, uh, so peak to peak, uh, we call it a cycle, number of such cycles per second. As we all know, it is called frequency. And the unit of frequency is the hertz, and which are the elementary basics of uh, microwaves, uh, I mean, electromagnetic waves. Then what are microwaves? So microwaves are uh, the electromagnetic waves uh, like uh, radio waves or light waves whose frequency is in the range of uh, 300 megahertz to 300 gigahertz. Or if it is a wavelength, uh, wavelength in the air ranging from 100 centimeter to 1 millimeter. So today's talk will be around only gigahertz frequencies. There is a microwave. So in short form, we can say there's a microwave means like a gigahertz like. So the word microwave is because it is a very short wave and uh, in the electromagnetic spectrum, that's why we call it as a microwave. So microwaves uh, travel at the velocity of light, uh, consists of uh, two, as I said, uh, two vectors, oscillating vectors or fields, that is uh, electric field and magnetic field. And in the electromagnetic spectrum, so what we have electromagnetic spectrum or see you can say have uh, that is a radio waves the sources like uh, uh, starts from the frequency 10 to the power of 5 or 10 to the power of 3 kilohertz like i mean uh, starting from the kilohertz and then we can just move on uh, we get uh, 10 to the power of 9 here 10 to the power of 9 hertz like microwaves so the major uh, applications of microwaves like like somewhere like uh, microwave ovens or or uh, radars or something like that and the energy will be around 10 to the power of minus 6 to 10 to the power of minus 3 and therefore they are called non ionizing like that and if we talk about the size size will be around honeybee size or, or maybe less than like butterfly or honeybee like structure and as I already said, the wavelength will be of a millimeter range, that is 10 to the power of 2. 
So microwaves are designated uh, by uh, according to the IEEE standards as of now. That is uh, IEEE standards uh, uh, are uh, they have classified the microwaves into various bands. They call with the L band that is a long band or large band like that. Yes, band, short band, C band that is a compromise between uh, C, S band and X band like that. So X band or the frequencies uh, say is from 8 to 12 gigahertz and uh, more often we use this X band uh, for uh, military and defense applications and KU band is there again uh, we are using there 12 to 18 gigahertz and uh, K band is there 26.5 to 40 bands and above K band they are classified as Q band, U band, AB band, W band, F band, D band like that. So various things and up to like uh, to 170 gigahertz of frequencies. And uh, we need uh, when these type of uh, bands are designated, we want uh, different sources also. So we will talk about that uh, what type of sources and other things uh, next in the next slides. So before we go, uh, just uh, some historical uh, uh, things. So what are the uh historical uh, uh, developments like that as we all know maxwell uh, maxwell uh, actually um, the greatest uh, theoretical physicist during the newton and einstein's period and uh, he gave uh, the relationship between these electric uh, field and the magnetic field and through his uh, four fundamental equations these four equations will become like uh, very famous equations and these four equations successfully explained the propagation of electromagnetic waves in various media and then uh, which actually made uh, revolutions in the field of uh, communications. Okay, so later uh, when the Maxwell gives uh, uh, his uh, theoretical uh, uh, equations. Then uh, Henry Hertz, a German professor of physics, uh, he conducted several experiments uh, during 19, uh, 1887 to 1891. And he actually validated all uh, Maxwell's uh, theory uh, of electromagnetic waves and then equations also. But uh, till then, people who are uh, scientists were working on this type of microwaves and then uh, electromagnetic radiations and so on. But uh, during World War II, especially in 1990s, microwaves attracted the scientific and industrial community because its characteristic properties, especially the most needed for radar applications, because those were the time the planes were used and uh, uh, in order to track the planes, they wanted uh, the radars actually and if you want to have the radar signal definitely microwaves were re required and uh, suddenly there uh, a big uh, uh, boom was uh, given to the microwaves so the people started working on these uh, especially industry people and other thing people were started working on these microwaves so communication systems uh, using microwave technology began to develop later and that's how uh, the microwave uh, uh, it started uh, it attracted and entered uh, even uh, in the um, military applications as well as uh, civilian applications. The basic properties of these microwaves are very interesting. Actually, these properties are only the building blocks for all uh, today's uh, uh, applications. And uh, those who are the beginners, especially the young friends, uh, juniors, uh, especially who are at the degree or master degree who are, who are listening here for them, it is very important. See, microwaves can pass through glass, paper, plastic, and other organic materials. And this is very interesting property. Microwaves are reflected by metal surface. That is another interesting property. We have to see whatever the application that we are seeing in our day-to-day -day life based on uh, these properties only. And the other thing is uh, microwaves penetrate and are absorbed by some substances like fats, sugar, and water molecules. These are the, especially these three properties are 
very very interesting properties and uh, uh, today we have exploited uh, most of these property you know the microwaves uh, applications based on these three properties microwaves are easily attenuated uh, within short distances microwaves uh, are uh, not uh, reflected by the ionosphere that is another Thanks, slides. Uh, uh, what are the advantages uh, of these microwaves? Uh, the advantages is uh, improved uh, directive property. That means uh, it has a line of sight. We call it as a line of sight propagation, like so direct to direct uh, communication. That is the ability to high gain directive antennas. And the microwaves can be focused in a specific direction, just like uh, a light waves. And uh, fading effect and reliability is uh, due to very high frequency and the line of sight propagation because it, uh, it goes in a straight line, just like uh, the way how a light wave passes in a straight line like that. So there is a less a fading effect and hence microwaves are more reliable. And transparency, microwaves are capable of passing through atmosphere and wave will not bend due to ionosphere. There's other, uh, and this actually makes it for satellite communications and other things. An improved bandwidth availability, uh, that is, this is very important because uh, uh, radio waves, uh, when you are uh, earlier with the, in the previous, in the old days, when we are radios means it is in the kilohertz or in the megahertz region. So megahertz means the bandwidth is very limited. But when you go for microwaves, the bandwidth is very high because it's order of, uh, 10 to the power of 9, that is gigahertz bandwidth. So gigahertz bandwidth means large amount of information or data can be transmitted due to the very wide bandwidth. And the power requirement, power requirement, they require very low power uh, for a transmitter and receiver compared to other waves. So this is, um, another thing is reduced size. Due to short wavelength, so the size will be very, highly miniaturized and uh, it is uh, reduced. You can see the earlier days uh, when the, the TVs were there, when uh, TV started in our country, maybe uh, in 1980s or 90s, we used to erect antennas, uh, antennas with uh, multiple elements, like uh, uh, nine elements, 10 elements, start from five elements to the 11 elements. So uh, all houses, uh, we used to see the antenna, vertical antennas, like because uh, the vertical and why we were using means those antennas are very low frequencies. That's, that's means as the frequency uh, decreases, then antenna size increases. So that means uh, other way around, as uh, the high frequency, the antenna size decreases. When the size is miniaturized, then automatically power requirement is also very less. So this is one of the interesting properties of uh, microwaves. So now quickly move on to what are all the different type of uh, sources that we uh, start or the historical background. <clears throat> so actually in 19, uh, uh, this when uh, uh, these type of uh, uh, devices started, uh, usually people started with uh, one device like uh, uh, the klistrons. When the klistrons are there, then they started going for TWCs, traveling wave to like structures. So actually in the 1944, Kompfner actually invented helix type uh, TWTs. Uh, since then, the concept of microwave tubes uh, deviated from conventional tubes. Conventional was only like a klistrons or reflex klistrons or multi-cavity klistrons were there. And the later on, uh, various uh, tubes were started. So these tubes result into new principles, amplification and generation of microwaves. And based on that, various types of uh, microwave devices started coming. Now uh, they are like uh, earlier they started with linear tubes like we call it as a linear beam tube. So what type means original type. And these original type are classified into two types. One is uh, like a cavity based and other one is a uh, slow structure based. 
in the cavity based they worked on the principle of resonance and uh, where the crystalline crystalline has um, various cavities in the cavities uh, resonance is to take place and because of resonance we used to get the microwaves uh, in the slow wave structure uh, it, it, they use uh, some uh, slow wave structures like helix uh, structures that's why helix is here helix uh, like uh, slow wave structures twts and uh, forward wave uh, uh, amplifiers backward wave amplifiers oscillators all those things that started so gradually one by one various types of devices started and um, later on various uh, applied you know tweetrons uh, coupled cavity twds and many other things started coming up so microwaves uh, uh, suppose if you are talking about uh, the klistron so the klistron actually uh, this is one schematic uh, diagram of klistron. Uh, uh, it consists of like just uh, electron gun. From the electron gun, we get continuous electrons. When these continuous electrons, so they are coming with some kinetic energy, like uh, you, whatever the voltage is applied. Uh, based on the applied, we used to get uh, EV is equal to half m square like that. So that much of velocity of electrons used to come. And that is with a DC voltage. When DC voltage electrons are interacted with uh, some RF input here, so radio frequency input, then what happens uh, during positive half cycle of this uh, DC electrons get accelerated and all electrons get bunched for a group together, they bunch, they bunch form will take place. And similarly, negative half cycle. So the velocity of the electrons are slowed down here and they are also grouped together and they also form like a bunch so this type of a bunching phenomena takes place and these bunched electrons are again passed through you know one more resonant uh, cavity and thereby we used to get uh, some rf uh, that is microwaves and those electrons which are not uh, undergo interactions with the rf they'll collected here in the collector like that so this is a very simple setup like and this all done with the vacuum tubes and the clistrons were earlier used and these clistrons were uh, giving uh, very poor you can see it is a 1.26 watts of uh, energy and the efficiency is also very less like 28.28 uh, 28 to 30 percent efficiency was there and uh, compared to the applied voltage they used to get very low output here and that's why the clistrons uh, people started instead of having two cavity clistrons they started with having multi cavity cyclistrons and all those things they started and the research also went like that instead of having interactions uh, here uh, in this between the small gap so where we can't uh, we have a continuous like so that's why they call it as a helix like structure the same electron gun a dc electron coming with uh, uh, you no know, interact with the rf with the helix like structure and thereby this uh, rf used to give this uh, RF voltage to the electron and where electron gains more amount of RF energy and thereby we are getting microwaves here at the output. So these type of structures now started coming later in the TWTs and uh, so later in the in these direct cases either in the TWT or in the case of uh, uh, Clistron we had uh, electron interacting with uh, only electric field but uh, here people started teasing why can't we make like the electrons uh, interact with both electric and magnetic then came this type of structure they call it as a magnetron wherein magnetron uh, the magnetic field is applied perpendicular to the electric field and thereby electron moves in a circular path and while it is going in a circular path gains energy and from there we used to get the rf output so this type of uh, devices actually magnetron uh, will get like a 2.545 gigahertz and the voltage uh, the maximum power will be around one kilowatt of the power so this is one typical uh, magnetron which uh, we are using even in commercial and uh, as uh, the days uh, uh, pass then we want it to uh, have a more amount of uh, energy and uh, more amount of uh, frequency also so that is high frequency we want and high also high energy 
So then people started uh, looking for the another type. They call it as a gyrotrons. So gyrotrons, uh, again, it actually it has a rotating magnetic field is here. Because of rotating magnetic field, the same electron beam uh, undergoes with rotating magnetic field, magnetic coils, then it gains the energy. And by that energy will be around, you can see that 100 kilowatts of energy it gains and 95 gigahertz, not 1 gigahertz, 2 gigahertz. Earlier, magnetron was giving only 2.5 gigahertz, but now we are getting with a gyrotrons with a 95 gigahertz of frequency. And this type of uh, devices are required for high energy transmissions like his term. So uh, this is a gyrotron and even here in India also we are uh, using, uh, uh, you know, we are fabricating this gyrotron at uh, one uh, place that is uh, Siri. Uh, and here also in Bangalore we have like a MTRDC where uh, people are, where scientists are working on the gyrotron. Uh, uh, can I can I uh, uh, run this video or shall I skip this video? You can run. Sir. Okay. Okay. Audio is not. Uh, one minute, I'll increase the sound. Okay. Okay. In today's time, energy is quite essential. Research is beginning that gives you science from the earth. You can answer the question. I say such energy. In 1985, we did not show this kind of research. We did not show this 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 research. The first Indian director, Prabhu Vada Ransom, was successfully developed and So like that, like that, you know, uh, we have, uh, uh, we are manufacturing gyrotrons in our country and uh, as the target is like 170 gigahertz and with a very high power. So microwaves, uh, there are other uh, devices are also there. Whatever the devices we have dis discussed, they are all like a uh, vacuum tube or uh, tube version devices. And uh, we can also, we have developed, uh, no, the scientists are developed with uh, microwave solid state devices or semiconductor devices. The microwave semiconductor devices are classified based on their characteristic uh, applicable properties. And uh, they are like microwave transistors, like 
micro solid state uh, micro transistors which are like uh, bjt's hbt's and uh, tunnel diodes or field effect uh, transistor based versions like mesfets uh, hemt high electron mobility transistors like that and mosfets uh, nmos or pmos cmos like or ccds all those things they are developed or some like gun diodes they are they are most popular nowadays gun diodes even for our labs our research labs or maybe our student labs we are using gun diodes and uh, indian phosphate diodes or cadmium tetrad diodes they are using and uh, avalanche based version they use impact pad or barrel diodes like that so there are various types of uh, solid state devices uh, based on solid state or semiconductor based we are working and you know, generating uh, gigahertz of frequency the only thing is uh, the, the vacuum tube the power is very high whereas semiconductors the power is very less and now there is a demand it is like that because uh, the future generation what we want is we want to have a win-win situation in both the say so win-win situation means we want uh, uh, have uh, more power and also the more frequencies and uh, so far we are scientists for using like indium phosphate gallium arsenide or uh, silicon silicon germanium silicon carbides like that but now uh, the one material is uh, attracted uh, the world uh, the community scientific community that is uh, gallium nitrates so gallium nitrates are uh, now becoming promising semiconductor which actually enhances uh, uh, the power also you can see the power is like uh, we are getting around 100 watts of power we are trying to get and at the same time we are trying to get at very high frequency also it is more than 10 gigahertz or maybe 12 gigahertz but uh, the challenge and future opportunities are here where uh, the gallium nitrates uh, or we, we have to improve uh, the you know frequency range also and we have to improve the power range also so that means we need to have like a very if it is like 100 gigahertz and it is giving more than 100 watts of power that semiconductor is really a wonderful uh, for various applications so now with this uh, information a bit of information on the sources we, we can move on directly on to the applications the applications, as I said in the beginning, there are a large number of applications are there, but uh, I restrict myself to the applications related to the communications, the defense, medical and industrial and domestic application, and then to the research. So, as I said in the beginning, the, we have used the electromagnetic spectrum entirely for communication in various ranges, especially now uh, we have used starting from like audio signal like we can see the one kilohertz that we, we used it for telephone land phones land phone telegraph like that and uh, 10 kilohertz uh, to one megahertz we have used it for aeronautical cable navigation uh, purpose and one megahertz we used uh, like for uh, fm am broadcasting and uh, 10 megahertz for uh, other amateur radios and other things like that and uh, above that that is 100 megahertz and all we have used uh, to various applications like vhs tv uh, mobile or navigations like that so this is a old version but uh, recently very recently uh, it has changed like uh, vhf band for uh, 30 up to 30 megahertz for fm and the UHF uh, up to 300 megahertz to 1 gigahertz for television broadcast, astronomy, mobile uh, applications, mobile phones. Our mobile phones are working in this range. Uh, Bluetooth, Zigbee, and other things, so whatever the facilities are there in the mobile phone that we are using in the UHF band, uh, that is ultra high frequency band, and long band, we can test military, telemetry, GPS, uh, and other applications we are using. And 2 gigahertz to 4 gigahertz we are using for S-band, that is weather, radar, uh, weather radar, uh, surface radars, microwave buns and microwaves and 5G networks. So the 5G networks, uh, people started up to exploiting up to 4 gigahertz, but uh, because of its uh, large bandwidth requirement, uh, 
you know, people are trying to explore uh, more than uh, four gigahertz. So where more than four gigahertz uh, are already occupied for uh, allot allocated for other applications. So therefore now 5G for the scientists are thinking of going above 24 gigahertz to 100 gigahertz for 5G, 6G or whatever the application it is for communication purpose. And uh, C band, it is there Wi-Fi, 5 gigahertz to 6 gigahertz because it's allocated already up to 8 gigahertz, but still more than this we want for uh, Wi-Fi uh, and other things because 5G, Wi-Fi, more bandwidth. As the bandwidth increases, I said, the power range also decreases. So that is another thing. And X-band, satellite communication, radars we are using. KU band, again, satellite communication. DTH we are using in the KU. And the K-band, satellite, uh, astronomical observers, autonomous vehicles. And uh, above KU band, we are using, again, satellite communications, autonomous vehicles, other things. So before fiber optic transmission, so most uh, long distance telephonic calls were carried out via microphone point to point links. But uh, in the early 1950s, frequency was uh, used to send up 5,400 telephone channels on each microwave radio channel combined into one antenna or up the next level up to 70 kilometers away. Then started Bluetooth, uh, Bluetooth used the microwaves in the 2.4 gigahertz. And nowadays, all our mobile phones with the Bluetooth uh, connectivity and their Bluetooth TV and TV also we have and many other laptops we have uh, Bluetooth connectivity like a 2.4 gigahertz allocation is given. And the wireless internet access services can be found to be in many countries from 3.5 to 4 gigahertz range. And for 5G and Evo technology, it is expected, as I said in earlier, 24 gigahertz. We are above 24 gigahertz uh, till 100 gigahertz frequencies we are trying to use. And uh, for the commercial uh, implements, uh, because uh, in the commercially also people are using uh, you know, wireless or Wi Fi or whatever it is, communications, they are using like 2.3 gigahertz to 2.5 gigahertz. 3.5 gigahertz and 5.8 gigahertz ranges. A cable TV, internet access, coaxial cable, and the broadcast television use the microwave of lower microwave frequencies. Some mobile phones, networks like uh, GSM also use lower mobile frequencies. So these are the various allocations of uh, bands. For example, very low frequency band, 3 to 30, we were using for electronic toys and equipment. But uh, again, a super high frequency, 3 to 30 gigahertz for radars, all these things. Commercially, it is ultra high frequency we are using, like up to 3 gigahertz. Like. So this is actually the people existing mobile spectrum. If you look at the mobile spectrum for uh, microwaves, below 1 gigahertz, we are using TV, and 1.6 gigahertz, we are using Wi-Fi, and uh, other things and the new mobile spectrum we want in the new mobile spectrum we want to go above the 30 gigahertz frequency like 5g or uh, uh, 6g's we want uh, because high speed networking we want and large amount of it. the information we need to send at the same time so for that uh, fast network is required and without any attenuation is required that is called long-term evaluation LTEs. and for all such applications we want very high frequency and high bandwidth and with the good gain also we want that is also important because if there is no gain then most of the signal will get attenuated so therefore uh, new mobile spectrum wants 30 gigahertz uh, of uh, microwaves up to 100 gigahertz so this is what uh, we are uh, actually the target is and uh, now the whole world uh, actually we are trying to explore uh, this type of uh, bandwidth and the sources required for this and the transmission techniques also we want to use and without the loss in the frequencies that also we have to manage all these things are the, the challenges of uh, future days and for that uh, microwaves antennas are also required and there are various types of antennas are here and uh, those antennas like uh, you know we call them as a micro strip antenna micro strip antenna most of uh, uh, us are aware 
that uh, you know we have like PCBs. So in the printed circuit board on the one side we have a, a conducting plate and it's a ground plate. We call it the ground plate. It's a conducting like copper will be there and above the copper there is a dielectric. And above the dielectric again one more patch we have and that is also a conducting surface. And this patch has a length L and width V, the W, and this particular dimension for a particular frequency, we need to design this type of uh, uh, patch antenna like that. So in most of our mobile, earlier mobile phone, probably you must be aware of uh, mobile phone used to come with one antenna. But nowadays, uh, it is very difficult to see antenna in our mobiles because everything is uh, buried inside in the mobile itself but with the very small structures of this type of patch antennas. And uh, such type of antenna, if you want to go for very high gain and uh, high bandwidth applications, then we have to go for uh, the arrays of antennas like this. We call it as a microstrip patch antenna arrays. There are some antennas uh, we use very high gain, high bandwidth or satellite applications. Then we want to get this type of antenna. We call them as reflector type of antennas and uh, this type of antenna we call it as a lens antenna which works on the principle of similar to the optical uh, uh, properties that is converging how lens will converge in the same way here also it is converged and this is one particular antenna that actually we fabricated the, uh, in our lab where uh, you know, we have uh, used uh, you know the copper uh, it is a antenna, uh, just like uh, the, on the back side we have a copper and above here it is a dielectric. And this is a patch we have used for 10 gigahertz and uh, it has given very high bandwidth of 125, uh, 25, 25 gigahertz of bandwidth and very highly miniaturized antenna it is actually. And uh, it's almost uh, uh, the size is reduced by uh, 10 to 20 times uh, compared to the traditional copper patch antennas and these type of antennas uh, finds a very good applications in biomedical applications or uh, controlling the bio devices like that and uh, and uh, that uh, completes the antennas on one on this you know we'll move on to the radars so there are uh, various types of radars are there. Before we go to the various types of radar, so what is the radar? Radar, how it works like that? Radar is uh, it consists of a transmitter as well. It is a behind the transmitter. There is a microwave device. This microwave device um, produces uh, the very high frequency microwaves, and whatever the way we want, we will whether we modulate or anything altered to be done. What all these things will do. And then we'll send it with the uh, uh, antenna that is a transmitting antenna. So the power transmitted that we represented as a PT. And this is actually the way we transmitted signal and it hits the target. And after hitting the target again, echo signal means a reflection will get. And the reflected uh, signal is again received by the reflecting antenna. It comes to duplexer. Duplexer means it's worth like a transmitter as well as reflectors like that. And this duplexer, when received signal, uh, the power of the reflected signal is sent to the receiver. And the receiver actually analyzed carefully where the target is and how long it is. That is because that it goes with a particular uh, frequency and, and with particular direction. And the reflected signal carries the information. So thereby we will calculate uh, the, where is the target and in what direction it is. All these things will get it and that will appear in the radar display as like this. So this actually, the circles say the distance and then this is the direction, which direction it is there. That's the scanner which actually represented. So these type of things we'll use and the normal radar functions, it goes with their particular range, velocity, angular direction, all these things with what direction the signal is going and how, with what velocity is going and in what direction is going, all these things will be calculated. And a reflected signal, that is a signature analysis. A signature analysis means where the target is, the target size is det determined, target shape is determined, and moving parts, whether it is moving or stationary, 
target all these things will detect and also what is the material composition that also we will discuss we will be able to detect and like this radar also this type of frequency band is specifically allocated to various types of radar in uh, for example in the l band uh, we have given like a satellite uh, imaginary mapping and other things and environmental monitoring also we have given like two to four gigahertz weather radars air traffic control radars and the four to eight four to eight is there uh, that is gigahertz that is uh, hydraulic radar topography and other things like that each uh, particular bands we have allocated to the specific uh, applications of uh, the radar for example k band we have gone to the police radar weapon guidance remote sensing perimeter surveillance everything given like so this is the allocations of various type of radars military radars uh, military application important part of uh, air defense system operation offensive missiles and other weapons is to be detected so therefore air defense radars are moving actually they are on the trucks itself installed and they will be able to be inst installed wherever it is needed. Uh, it tracks the targets, detects weapons, and uh, intercept of all access to effective effectiveness engagement. Uh, in the field area, ground uh, air surveillance, for that purpose, we use the radars. You can see the radar is here. And the uh, air traffic control radar, this is type of radar, probably all of us are aware this type of radar is uh, installed on the airports uh, where uh, the uh, traffic, air traffic can be contained, that is the flights can be monitored, whether they take off or landing, everything will be controlled, that is in the air traffic control radar. Missile control. Similarly, missiles also we need to control. Control so the missile control radars are there, and navigation control. So where it is location, moving objects, everything. Navigation based radars are there, and radars are also used to law enforcement and the highway safety, especially on the traffic. Uh, the radar, radars. This is uh, even in Bangalore. These type of uh, devices are installed. That is, they check the speed limits of the speed of the vehicles. So, radar speed meters are used by police uh, enforcing speed limits. Actually, they send the microwave signal and hits our vehicle and reflects back, goes back to the same device, and then it says how far is and with what whatever speed we are, the vehicle is moving like that. All these things will be detected and it will be displayed also there itself. And some radars are uh, incorporated in the vehicle itself, where it actually says the signal will be transmitted to the uh, continuously. Suppose if there is any other vehicle is coming head to head, then it says uh, it avoids the collision. Immediately, sensor will be energized in the car, and that turns on the uh, actuating the airbags and warning obstruction or people behind the vehicle for them everything uh, it will use the information so such type of uh, radars are also installed in the vehicles and uh, ship safety even in the uh, sea uh, the ships are installed with the radars and uh, uh, where it uh, says about the collision avoidance of the ships and to observe navigation uh, especially when the visibility is very poor and shore based radar, radars are also surveillance uh, especially installed in the harbors uh, to control the river traffics like that space applications this we know very well uh, because ground based radars are used for detection and tracking of satellites and other space objects and uh, these are all uh, actually metal disc because uh, the property of microwaves is that microwaves get reflected by the metal sheet and these metal reflected waves are again collected they converge at some point and that uh, converged signal that is unified signal we will take from the center so that is the basic property of uh, the microwaves established uh, you know we have explored and here is microwave one that is uh, industrial applications 
1945, a Dr. Perry Spencer, scientist, was working in a lab using a magnetron and he felt some heat in his hand uh, and he observed that it is because of uh, microwaves coming from the vacuum tube. So he got very curious and immediately he places a chocolate or bar near the, he goes, he takes a chocolate, the cold the chocolate from the fridge and then he keeps in front of the uh, microwave tube, that is a magnetron tube. Then the chocolate gets melted and he got the brilliant idea and they, which actually led to the development of a microwave ovens. So what happens in the microwave ovens? That is the question. So when microwave actually, the microwave consisting of magnetron, which we discussed earlier, the same magnetron is there. And the magnetron, it's a non it uh, emits non-ionizing radiation and uh, frequency of 2.5 gigahertz. And uh, food absorb this energy from uh, energy from these microwaves, especially the water molecules contain uh, three atoms, that is uh, oxygen, hydrogen, and these vibrate in a number of uh, different ways. During these number of different ways, they get a friction. But even the mechanisms also, it is very well uh, now understood. So what happens, uh, especially when the <clears throat> magnetron emits microwaves in a microwave one? So microwaves interact with the molecules via two modes of action. One is dipolar rotation, another one is conducting ionic conduction. In the dipolar rotation, molecules rotate. Actually, you can see here, it is a dipole uh, is there. And the dipole, actually, it starts a dipolar rotation. And uh, there is another one is ionic conduction will take place here. Yeah. So positive, negative, positive, negative, like that. And uh, this all happens only because of electric field, because it is not, because a microwave emits electromagnetic radiation, but magnetic component will not responsible here. It is only the electric component is responsible to create these type of things. So, the it causes two things one is dipolar uh, rotation another one is ionic conduction so because of these things when uh, these uh, uh, dipolar rotation take place and possible frictions will take place between the neighboring uh, you know, dipoles so therefore uh, this electro uh, the friction between each rotating molecule results in heat generation and similarly for uh, ionic also uh, the whenever there is a free ion or ionic species moves translationally, so it moves like here you can see the ionic it moves translational motion, and this translational motion also make a, a friction between moving species and results in the heat generation. And uh, other industrial applications like microwave device uh, for textile finishing process. Because as we know, during the textile process, again, uh, moisture will be there in the textile and you want to remove the texture, textile and because the various coloring pigment that the designs, everything they will make and uh, it will be in the moist condition. We want to dry this and then we want to get it in a very good finish. Then uh, people, they use microwaves here and the device passes through textile material or white state through waveguides and thereby will get the heating effect and because of that we will get a, a fine fabric output and microwaves uh, this is another one non-destructive techniques a very interesting one so where uh, microwaves immense potential in uh, determining the strength of metal or non-metallic structures so whether it is a metal or non-metal or nowadays people are using this technology even to detect uh, the strength of, uh, uh, you know, um, the pillars which are erected with the concrete. Suppose whether iron rod is, it has got rusted or it is not, uh, the concrete is good or not, or the, what is the strength of this pillar like that. So what, this is the same technique they are using. Microwaves uh, show immense potential in determining strength of a metal or non-metallic structures. So low frequency microwaves, if you use a low frequency, they'll simply pass through the metal and uh, if a receiver is here, uh, like any receiving antenna, it receives a signal and thereby we know the, what is the transmitting uh, you know, signal and received signal, the power at the transmitting and power at the receiving 
if you measure then immediately we will get to know so where suppose if the same transmitter is uh, tracked all along the length of the specimen we call it is a device under test uh, then we will be able to tell where if wherever we get the, the last you know uh, power then there says we say that the, the the weakening of this material or uh, the metal so where uh, the, the another principle also we can use because metals reflect uh, the uh, microwaves so therefore by the reflection either through transmission or through reflection for reflection we need to use very high energy so microwaves are reflected by metallic structures and reflect uh, less electromagnetic waves than pure metals so the magnitude of loss can be determined by using microwave testing any metal wherever there is a, even this type of things we can use in uh, testing the container the walls of uh, the uh, containers like uh, huge boilers in the industries without shutting down the industries uh, boiler uh, industry uh, even in the working condition itself just we use uh, the uh, you know microwave source under track on the other end immediately we can say if there is any cracks or form in the boiler uh, container we immediately we can say this is uh, where actually the crack has developed and we can replace the boiler like that and uh, microwaves uh, are used in uh, some chemical industries to heat the chemical chemicals some people they use uh, uh, some reactions heat is needed so their microwaves are used <clears throat> and to stop uh, this type of uh, heat is needed to initiate the reaction or to change the state at the end product then we use uh, the microwave heating and uh, ultra rapid methods like microwave heating is uh, used to uh, uninfected or extended shelf life of uh, some beverages foods and uh, some biomaterials like that we will irradiate with the microwaves and uh, thereby uh, their uh, shelf life can be increased and uh, some people the you know microwaves can be used for sterilizing purpose also sterilization uh, especially use this sterilization mechanism for cheese pasta dairy and coffee based drinks and many other food products so they they are using these type of things and foam drying just like cloth foam is also like foam drying also they use uh, the same microwave materials microwave sources and wherever uh, it is required powder drying like uh, dry powder with less impressive result so uh, in contra industrial for example most uh, traditional dry drying equipment takes longer time to dry the powder uh, with the less impressive results whereas uh, in case of uh, uh, microwaves uh, microwaves will be uniformly apply energy uh, to evaporate moisture from the product and we can use this method for drying the powders like that in medical applications of uh, microwaves uh, it is uh, a large number of applications are there where uh, just we can say microwave imaging we can use microwave imaging like uh, thermal uh, energy diagrams we'll get and based on the thermal energy diagrams uh, we call it as thermograms using thermograms we'll be able to see now what is the intensity if there is any information i know uh, diseases are there or any cancerous things are there like that and the dielectric uh, spectroscopic techniques are also used and uh, microwave based uh, molecular diagnostics uh, microwave telemetry microwave based medical waste management uh, microwave based diagnostic pathology so there, anywhere we suppose the heat is required uh, then microwaves are passed uh, to give the heat to the specific uh, uh, tissues or the areas like that then micro medical sensors they use where, for example micro patches are installed there to detect uh, medical sensor you know informations and micro energy drug delivery we can use and micro ablation in treatment especially the Microwaves are used to uh, remove or blast the 
uh, gall stones in the gall bladders like that and various applications are there if we go comfort uh, uh, research we use the uh, some many semiconductor processing techniques microwaves are used to uh, for various applications especially they use uh, reactive ion etching and plasma enhanced uh, chemical vapor deposition instruments they use my microwave devices magnetrons are used to as a source to vaporize materials especially in the sputtering techniques rf sputtering is a radio frequency sputtering instrument we use magnetrons klystrons magnetrons and other microwave devices are used as sources in the accelerators wherever accelerator based research is there especially microtron or synchrotron like that then we use uh, these type of uh, devices and as i said entity testing we use uh, microwaves enhanced nmr spectroscopy for biomolecules material process processing microstrip antennas mimo antennas MIMO, multiple input multiple output antennas mimo antennas microstrip arrays phased array antennas for all these things we use and many researchers are working on this microstrip antennas and other things and high frequency and high power radars are also they are using these things and uh, there is one important aspect is here uh, there is always people are curious uh, what, what happens uh, uh, whether microwaves are safe or it is causing health hazards like that so for that actually uh, radiation zones uh, we classify first uh, radiation zone means that there are uh, uh, three regions we say reactive zone or non radiative near field zone and radiating near field zone we call it as a fresnel zone and radiating far field zone that is there so usually that are represented with the far is equal to that is a radioactive reactive zone r is equal to lambda by 2a uh, then uh, we call it as uh, um, uh, that is in the ready reactive zone and uh, r is equal to 2d square by lambda where lambda is uh, the wavelength and uh, d is uh, the physical size of the antenna like that and uh, if for radiating far field is r is uh, greater than 2d square by lambda then it is a radiating far field so how we do we represent like that means so if there is an antenna is here and the near field consists of both non radiative reactive and radiative fresnel zone and the far field is called as fresnel actually from a far field you call it as a fresnel zone or far field zone and the radi radioactive re zone um, that is non radiative uh, and radiative near field zone are actually hazardous actually and for that actually you, it is uh, how it is hazardous and everything is uh, designated or uh, calculated as one by an equation that is called as a specific absorption rate sar specific absorption rate is a measure of the rate at which the energy is absorbed by the human body especially human body means uh, you, you, it consisting of uh, tissues blood and uh, everything so when exposed to high frequency radio frequency sar is equal to sigma e square by md where sigma is conductivity e is electric field intensity and uh, md is a mass density that is kg per meter square so usually uh, this is sar has become now mandatory for mobile phones so earlier mobile phones when you are talking on the mobile phone we used to get some sweat or water vapors on the cheeks or near the ear so this is because uh, the sar values when the sar value is very high that is more than 1.6 watts per kg then that uh, that area we used to get a uh, heat even also even now also we suppose if you are using mobile phone for long but uh, period like hours together talking then you will get the, your phone is also get uh, you know heat and uh, the the near the ear you will get the water vapors so because the microwaves continuously interact with the this human body and uh, nowadays uh, the whole world it is uh, said that is sar especially in india uh, the sar value should be uh, less than 1.6 watts per kg
and the radiation hazards are classified as uh, three types one is uh, uh, that, uh, hazard electromagnetic radiation personnel and hazard electromagnetic radiation ordinance hero and hazard electromagnetic radiation like fuel uh, depending upon if it is a personal means how electromagnetic radiation or microwave is in, uh, affecting to the person then it is a herb like and as i said uh, the blood muscles bone brain uh, fat they are all, uh, caused by thermal effect and uh, which absorb on uh, absorption of radiation uh, that is micro radiation and significant internal heating will occur um, without the knowledge because the body does not have the sensors to uh, sense the heat inside and uh, tissue damage may occur before we come to know that the uh, heat uh, has uh, you know we have got the heat due to microwaves like that uh, suppose if the microwaves uh, are uh, you know directly incident on the eye or if i is eye lens is exposed to microwaves uh, sufficient flow of blood for cooling the lens tissues will be restricted and therefore uh, the, we get the cataract there is a cause for the cataract our stomach and intestines and bladder are sensitive to thermal damage from the powerful microwaves and uh, significant energy absorption will occur when the body is nearly about one by one tenth of the length of the microwaves. Uh, Microwave ordinance, we call it as ordinances, means it is like a weapons. So, microwaves energy cause hard, hazardous to the ordinance, like weapons uh, and safety and emergency devices uh, containing which is very sensitive electro explosive devices because a small amount of heat is uh, sufficient to create a big blast. So, that is therefore we have to keep the the you know explosives so it is from the away from the um, microwave areas so ordinances are more sensitive to than human and they do not have any circulatory system to dissipate it so the only one thing is we have to keep this type of uh, <clears throat> devices uh, safely and uh, it should be uh, preserved in the metal containers so because uh, microwaves will reflect uh, to the metal and therefore uh, the, our ordinances that is explosives will become safe. And there is one more that is uh, fuel. It's similar to the ordinance, fuel is also very important. So we have to preserve um, the you know, microwaves. We have to be, uh, you know, take care about the microwaves, especially with the fuel. So, there may be due possibility of uh, accident due to igniting fuel vapors by RF induced areas uh, during handling operations, especially proximity to high level RF fields. Uh, so therefore, fuel is also we have to be you know take away from the high frequency microwave. I mean high power microwaves. So the probability of ignition may significant more than fifty volt or amperes. So, her precaution are more uh, general concern of the fuel operators. For example, do not energize a transmitter or a radar on a, an aircraft or motor vehicle being fueled or an adjusting aircraft or vehicle. This is the same reason even uh, in the aircraft, they say while well, takeoff and landing, they say, uh, please switch on your mobile phones like that. They say because they are restricting because they should not get uh, interference and other things like so radars are capable of eliminating uh, fueling areas with the peak power of density of 5 watts per centimeter square and therefore it should be shut off uh, by the time of fueling so similarly for shore stations antennas radiating 250 watts or less than should be uh, initiated at least 50 feet from the fueling areas the antennas which radiate more uh, than 250 watts, um, the power density is 50 feet. A fueling operation should not be greater than or equivalent to power density of 250 watt transmitter located at 50 feet. Usually, microwave health effects will be there. These are general effects. 
Microwave radiation can heat body tissue the same way it heats the food. Exposure to high level microwaves can cause painful burn. And microwaves uh, converts vitamin B12 from active to inactive form. Uh, microwave radiation causes, uh, this is uh, many uh, scientists have conducted a global research. And uh, in this, uh, they have found that uh, they causes headaches, uh, poor concentrations, and then confusions, memory loss, restlessness, especially these confusions and all the, they have observed in the birds because there are migratory birds are there. So migratory birds are due to the microwaves, uh, so they get confused. So nowadays, uh, uh, they are not going to the same place. Earlier, they used to go to the same place while during migration. But now, they are actually not, they are not getting the way. They get confused uh, because of these microwaves. The lens of the eye, as I said, that this is uh, exposure to high level can cause cataracts. High level of microwaves can cause, uh, that is, uh, headache also, uh, restlessness and confusions. And this is what uh, it is there, restlessness is there. Uh, even today, uh, which we can see, uh, even our uh, common man is also experiencing that restlessness is there. So to conclude, uh, uh, extent your uh, R&D opportunities are there in the field of micro, especially microwaves, especially on uh, the development of uh, microwave devices, microwave sources, uh, whether it is a semiconductor devices, if it is a semiconductor devices, then you call it as a monolithic microwave integrated circuits like that. Microstrip antennas, many people are working in this area. They are going to design and develop microstrip antennas for various applications. And radars applications is there, communication system is there, industrial application system, so various heating, testing, etc. other applications are there. Interdisciplinary areas of research like microstrip antennas, microwaves, artificial intelligence enabled, um, medical applications, artificial enabled, microwave communications and so many things are there and many more possible things are there. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, sir, uh, one more uh, concept. Uh, nowadays, uh, glass synthesis uh, uh, is going on using a microwave. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, for na nanos also, we are using microwaves. So microwave uh, studies we are doing for uh, again heating, annealing, and various purpose applications we are using. Wherever heating is required and other things are required, then definitely we use the microwaves. Any uh, differences uh, in uh, normal crucible uh, glass and uh, microwave glasses? Yeah, that is what actually in in the normal uh, process especially if it is in case of uh, a furnace what happens the container heats and then it heats the specimen or sample but in mm. case of microwaves it directly heats the specimen or my container will not get heat container will be cool mm. like that means interaction will be there directly mm. I'm unmuting uh, everyone yes. so that you can uh, unmute yourself and you can ask. Kagli, sir, any comments? Dinesh, sir, any questions? Uh, thanks to the speaker for a very fine talk. He, gave, he has given us a, a very glimpse of the wide variety of applications of microwaves and uh, possible applications. Uh, many people can take up uh, these things in their yes. career. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Sir, we are running out of the time. So okay. I think uh, we can end here. So okay. thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for your time and uh, yeah. inside knowledge sharing with us. Creative yeah. is Thanks, very man. honored uh, okay. for you having you.
on his, okay. this platform. Thank you, one and all, for being with us. Thank you, sir.